All right, so you guys have probably seen uh, AI in almost every booth in here, and uh, we're going to talk about what we think AI should do for you. So first of all, if you don't know who Trellix is, and uh, we've been around a long time. Uh, we are the combination of McAfee Enterprise and uh, FireEye. We came together and we formed a lot of new things since the merger uh, back in 22. And what I want to focus on today are some of the building blocks uh, that we've built over the years. So you see back in 2014, uh, some friends of mine and I uh, created some analytics, uh, called one of the most important ones in security called the Impossible Travel Analytic. And in 2016, we invented something called Guided Investigations, which is essentially the playbooks or questions that go with any alert that shows up. And then fast forward to last year, where we came out with our AI Guided Investigations, which builds on all these things. So you can see we have a rich heritage. So before AI, we had this approach where you would take data sources from everywhere you could get it, which is uh, whether they're SAS connectors, whether they're high volume uh, throughput through S3, whether it's syslog, all these different sources, put it in a data lake, index it, and then we'd run analytics rules and intel on it. Uh, this is a very valuable thing. You're going to find where all the bad stuff is. It'll create anomalies. A human is notified, hey, you got to look at something. And then the human would use uh, the open search service to go through and do that investigation. So this was really uh, successful at ingesting the data itself doing the indexing and matching, and searching what I would call obscene data volumes, because we're talking terabytes a day per customer. What didn't work so well is that uh, we didn't have time to get through all the alerts. We talked to customers, and they would get, uh, I'll show you later, but upwards of 1,000 alerts a day, and they couldn't get through all of them in time. So what we figured out was that we needed to take that broad bird's eye view that we have with all this context and add generative AI to it so that we can actually get through those alerts quickly. So this is what it looks like now. You see, it starts out the same way. We still need to collect all that data. We still need to do the initial detection using things like analytics and rules and intel to figure out what is interesting. But here's where things change. Instead of asking the human to go see, hey, there's an alert, go look at this, we have Bedrock do the investigation on your behalf for you before you're notified. And the reason that we're able to do that is we have these questions lined up for the AI to ask. So we go out and we collect the data so that we have the answers. So we have uh, answers around what else happened, what else has this uh, asset been doing, how often does it happen. These are not correlations, these are questions and answers, and that's really the key difference. And the reason that we're able to do that is, first of all, we have that initial detection. So we have those rules that are saying, hey, you need to look at something. That's kind of obvious. But the second part isn't. It's the fact that we can ask these questions in sub-second response times. That allows us to ask 20 questions of every single alert that comes through in a timely fashion. If you have some other indexing engine on the back end, you're not going to be able to answer that question very quickly, which is why you don't see this on any other booth around here. We are the only ones that are able to successfully do this auto triage right now. The other reason is that we have these pre-built investigations that go with it. These are not playbooks. These are questions and answers, and there's a big difference between a playbook and a question and answer. And this leads us to this, which is the important part. So I used to run a SOC for almost a full decade. When I look at this stuff, I look at it as, how does this help my staff get more work done? And what we had found was that most places would look at just their favorite alerts, the ones that they could trust to know were pretty high fidelity, and you'd ignore all the informational low-level alerts. But what we've learned is that advanced threat actors often show up in informational level alerts. Password resets, service accounts being created. These are just informational daily business activities, but when you get the right sequence of them over time, that's actually an indication of a threat actor. So how would anyone look at an informational level alert? You start with a billion events going into the system. We do the rules, analytics, and intel to get that down to 1,000. This is where we've been as an industry up until this last year. What we added was Trellix Wise with Bedrock, which actually asks those question and answers and gets you down to the actual 10 alerts that you can, if we're being honest, actually look at as a human in a day. You're not going to look at 1,000 alerts as a human. You might sort, you might filter, but you're not actually looking at the content for each one. And that's because this is what it takes to actually look through an alert. You'd have to find the answers to all these questions, and that takes time. So in the green here, I've kind of made some estimates about how long that would often take someone to figure out, is this user currently traveling? Were there uh, failed password resets? Does the user have an executive assistant? What level of access do they have? And what do they do after the password reset? If you were to do a full investigation, these are the questions that you would have to ask as an analyst. We can do all of that automatically. And the cool part is that we collect all the data, give it to Bedrock, and say, based on all of this, do you think a human needs to look at this, yes or no? And because it has all of that information available,
available, it can do that 13 minutes of work for you. But you don't have to take my word for it. I know this looks like marketing slides. Let's dive in. This is the part that I like. Let's get into the weeds because I think this is the part where things get really cool. When I started to see this stuff come out of Bedrock, this is when I knew that we were in a new era of security. This is actual, we put the highlights in here, but this is copied and pasted from the output that you get in our product today. So it'll say, based on what I just read through, all of the question and answers that you gave me, uh, the, you have an IOC that was triggered, you have a source IP that communicated, and the highlighted in blue here appears to be cloud hosting providers. Generative AI understands the concept of a cloud hosting provider. So if you say AWS, it knows that's a cloud provider. It knows that means that the IP addresses are often shared between tenants, that they're not necessarily allocated to one entity. And it uses that in its decision making as it's going through here to decide whether or not someone should actually look at this. And that's important because if it's a scanning IP address coming from a cloud provider, it understands that that's not necessarily the same as if it's coming from somebody's home. So it has all of these pre-trained concepts built in. And this is really important. We didn't do any training of that model for a very good reason. We want it to be the judge and jury to decide when we give it all the facts, should someone look at this, yes or no. We don't want to bias it. We don't want to give it anything that might make it hallucinate. We do this so that when we give it the facts, we get the objective result out of it, should someone look at this, yes or no. Another one here was pretty interesting. This is from our demo environment. Notice that the AI figured out it's in a demo environment. It said, this asset is a demo user. Now, this is pretty topical because uh, in the last few weeks, we've seen a security incident that happened because of single factor authentication on demo users, what, which can be prone to compromise if credentials are shared. It not only figured out this was a demo user, it understood that that is more prone to be compromised because in a, a demo environment, you're going to have single factor authentication and share this. This is completely new. You go back 12 months, this tech simply didn't exist. And we've been in a great position to take the whole concept of data lakes and connectors to be able to give those facts to the AI so that it can make the right determination on it. It doesn't stop there. What about Tor activity? It understands the concept of Tor. It knows inherently that's a very weird thing for an enterprise environment. So if any of the events surrounding the alerts that it's looking at have something referencing Tor, it knows that, okay, this is definitely not business as usual. Someone should absolutely look at this because it's a strong indicator of compromise. So again, this is copy and pasted directly out of the write-up that the AI is doing completely in the background on your behalf, and it will only bug you if there's something to look at. And this is how we get to this. Instead of saying, okay, we'll look at just the top 10% of alerts that we know are something interesting, this will dig through that 90% of alerts that nobody was ever going to look at with that full level one investigation and bubble those up to the surface that, so when somebody creates a service account, you know that it's okay. Somebody did an investigation to make sure that that service account was created, was all right. And this is the way to think about it. Our average customer has about a billion events that come in per day. That's about a thousand alerts per day. If, and then that takes about 65 events for each alert. If you multiply that out by taking five seconds to look at every event that lines up with those alerts, that would take 12 eight-hour shifts worth of people for our average customer to actually investigate every single alert that came through. And that you'd have to hire that many staff to actually say, yes, we investigate every alert that comes through. This is where AI comes in. You can, you can trust it because you can see the output and the decision making that it has, and it's doing the work of that many people in addition. It's not replacing the analysts entirely, it's letting them scale out so that they are actually looking at the right things because you want them operating at a level two. And that doesn't stop there. This gets us in a situation where you can start tuning this. So instead of just saying, well, I don't agree with the decision that the AI made there because we don't have all the right information to give it every time, you can tune it. You can say, by the way, we always escalate endpoint alerts when the user has access to AWS, et cetera, et cetera. You can go through anything you want. You can say alerts from sales on Tuesdays are especially important from us or for us. And you, you can put this all in natural language for the tuning and once you tune your entire security ecosystem in just one place and lets the AI figure that part out. And so this is how you go from data mining, which is where we started, to alert mining. Because you can put all of your alerts in one place, let the AI go through and triage everything with that investigation that you can read through on its reasoning. And then you can focus your time not on the machine level stuff, but on the human level stuff. So now you can make those phone calls to critical business leaders and say, 
hey, what's your most important app? How do we get telemetry in it? Because now we can make sure that AI has your back. It's actually going to look at every alert that comes through there. You can start to do things like uh, bring in telemetry from places that are most business critical and br uh, make those bridges across the organization. Again, it's elevating to the human level. And this has become really important lately because if you go back in 2005, that's when we had to get serious about machine learning on the, desk, on the desktop because you had polymorphic malware where every single malware sample was different. In 2010, you had automated phishing, so we had to get better at that. And then in 2015 is when credential theft really picked up. That's where you saw we had that analytic for impossible travel because people were started selling credentials on the dark web. Now fast forward to now, and starting last year, you started to see the bad guys do a lot more with phishing and just in general, uh, being much more motivated by money and ransomware, which is hugely successful. So a good friend of mine is currently a negotiator for ransomware. Her full-time job is to negotiate with ransomware to try to get the price down for the ransom. That's where we're at right now. And if you don't have something that's auto-triaging all the alerts coming through, the difference between something that investigates an alert that comes in at midnight and waiting until in the morning may cost you a conversation with my friend who negotiates with ran ransomware. So that's the, that's the big news here. So you don't want a chatbot. You don't want to log into the system in the morning and say, hey, did I get hacked last night? That's not what you want to do. You want to have the system work on your behalf and tell you when you need to pay attention. It needs to wake you up in the middle of the night and say, hey, we just checked all this out and this thing is legit, you got to look at this. So this will work for you. And thank you and I'm here for any questions.